imposible que un cubano, es, es muy difícil encontrar a un cubano que no tenga un poquitico de, de ritmo. ¿Qué significa para nosotros eso? Eso es vida. Es nuestra historia. Magali Rolando is a piano teacher who lives in Havana, the capital city of Cuba. She eagerly teaches the younger generation about the roots of Cuba's music. Music lies at the heart and soul of every Cuban. It originated mostly from Africa by those who were brought and enslaved centuries ago on this Caribbean island. Magali's ancestors originated in southern Africa, which connects her to the African beat. Besides teaching, Magali plays in a musical band led by 45-year-old Ramon Garcia, who creates his own music. We have us here in Africa. In my head, there's no song that I don't know if I don't sit down with a bass. Or a bass, a bass, a bass, a bass. No sé, tiene que haber algo, algún, algún sonido para yo sentir que el ritmo me está moviendo. Entonces, ya, ahí es donde el trabajo. Now songs and tunes are mixed with Spanish and pre-colonial indigenous origins as the enslaved embraced the tempo they found in Cuba when they first arrived. It is estimated that more than one million Africans were brought to the island through the port of Matanzas some 100 kilometers from Havana, as part of the transatlantic slave trade from the 16th century until slavery was abolished in Cuba in 1886. Bueno, porque el español, buscando mano de obra barata, los trajo para que trabajaran en la tierra, para que y los trajo a Cuba como esclavos. Y se trajeron los esclavos para las plantaciones de caña, pero también para las plantaciones de café. Lo más malo que hicieron fue separar familias. O sea, padres, madres, hijos. Separaron familias, separaron cultura. In 2007, the United Nations designated March the 25th as the International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery and the Transatlantic Slave Trade. It also established the United Nations Remember Slavery Program, which works with educators and civil society to teach future generations about the causes, consequences, and lessons of this human tragedy and the dangers of racism and prejudice. Today, people of African descent treasure the legacy of music and song brought to Cuba by their ancestors, and the younger generation is keeping that flame alive. But that isn't the only contribution of people of African descent to the development and culture of Cuba. In recognition of its African heritage, Cuba participates in a global slave route project initiated by UNESCO in 1994. La decisión de Cuba de destinar el castillo de San Severino a la creación de este museo dedicado a la ruta del esclavo. En la construcción de ese castillo estuvieron las manos esclavas. Entonces se decide destinarlo a la creación de este museo. Situated at the docks of Matanzas, the enslaved would carve symbols on slabs of stone depicting their religious and cultural background. Porque pensemos que eran personas que traían consigo, en algunos casos, un alto nivel cultural y que, bueno, desgraciadamente se vieron confinados a esa condición humana. Now a cultural heritage site, San Severino Castle documents the history of slavery through memorabilia dating back to the 16th century. By the time slavery was formally abolished, the enslaved had constructed forts and iconic buildings that still stand today, attracting thousands of visitors to the island. There are around 200 million people of African descent living in the Americas. Many millions more live in other parts of the world, outside of the African continent. Across the globe, Africans in the African diaspora continue to suffer inequality and disadvantage 
because of the legacy of slavery and colonialism. In addition to the International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery and the transatlantic slave trade, the United Nations has also set aside an international decade for people of African descent, which began in January 2015, to acknowledge their contribution to human history. The decade also recognizes injustices they endured while promoting and protecting their human rights. This report was produced by Mary Ferreira for the United Nations.